Knock knock. Someone's at the door. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi internet, I'm Steve and this is Raffo. Elantris, Brandon Sanderson's first published novel and the world's introduction to the Cosmere. Elantris was the first time we saw a Sanderson-type magic system. The first four times, technically. A rule-bound system where an individual with the appropriate connection to the magic inherent in the world is able to access power through the use of a specific metaphysical key. Ish. There's a lot going on on Cell in terms of investiture, so in order to keep things straight, we're going to talk first about how people use the magic, and then we'll talk about why it's accessed that way. There are six systems of investiture that we've seen so far on Cell, and they all have to do with shapes. Aeon Door, the headline system of Elantris, used by the Elantrians, and easily the one we know most about, glowy runes drawn in the air. Cheshan, the Jindoese magic Tai Chi, the system used by the Dakor monks of Fjordan, where the user's bones are twisted into the required shapes. The potions made by Fortin, a native of the conquered nation of Hrovel. Forgery, the stamp-based system seen in Emperor's Soul used to change the history of objects. And Blood Sealing, also a stamp-based system, but utilizing blood as an ink to a different effect. Though they appear disparate, there are certain elements that all of these systems share. The investiture on cell, the power that fuels all these magics, is known as the door, and every system on the planet uses this same source. With each of these, investiture access is dependent on the use of proper shapes or forms which, if done incorrectly or without the proper intent, things don't work right. It's like how every country on Earth uses electricity to power their blenders, but all the plugs are different shapes. Additionally, in order to use any of these systems, you have to be born, or at least have a spiritual connection, to the country or region where it's used, and the magic gets weaker the further away you are. Elantrians only come from Erelon. Forgers must be from my pond, and Fortin's the only person we've heard of from Hrovel, so He's definitely got that going for him. Another impressive thing about all these magic systems is how crazy specific you can be with what you want to do. Brandon refers to them as programming based. It's not limited just to single symbols. Rather, practitioners can create complicated structures and equations in order to accomplish really complex objectives. Apart from all these commonalities, the access and application of each of these systems varies immensely. To begin, Aeon Door the magic of the Elantrians in Erelon. Only those taken by the Sheod and turn into Elantrians can actually draw Aeons and channel the door. To anyone else, it'd just be writing cursive in the air. For an Elantrian, though, writing the Aeon for light will actually produce light. The Aeon for silence may absorb sound, and the Aeons for sight basically summons magical binoculars. The fundamental shape for every Aeon is, appropriately, Aeon Aeon. Every other Aeon uses that as its base. Imagine if the Roman alphabet used the letter A as a base for everything else. It'd be like A, B, C, no, that looks like a K, point proven. The interesting thing is that these symbols weren't created by the Elantrians. No one made up Aeon Ito to represent the body, Aeon Mai to represent honor, and Aeon Seo to symbolize loyalty. Um, these Aeons were actually discovered, not created. In fact, that's mostly what ancient Elantrian scholars did. Fiddled around with squiggly lines until something cool happened. Imagine accidentally discovering the Aeon for fire, or, like, soup. This is because the door, the investiture that powers all cellish magics, has certain frequencies and pulse lengths that, if the conduit is correct, will allow it to enter the world, as channeled by the shape of that conduit. Kind of like those weird Play-Doh extruder things. Chaining Aeons together further focuses that power, allowing for incredibly complex effects. However, if the shape isn't right, then nothing happens. Square peg, round hole. Cheshan, the magical Tai Chi of the Jindo people, south of Erelon. It's described as a meditative martial art meant to focus your mind and body before battle. However, we see that it also has direct combat application. The limbs of the user move in dance-like circular patterns, slowly gaining speed while appearing to strain against an unseen force. These motions create similar conduits to Aeons and allow access to the door, which can be seen by a dim glow in the wake of the movements, and give the user increased power and strength. There may be more application of Cheshan, but we haven't seen it yet. Little is known about the system used by the Dakor monks of Fjordan to access the door, even less about how they do it. What we do know is that the Dakor monastery is not a friendly place. It has a reputation for extreme violence, even in a religious system where monasteries train warriors, spies, and assassins. Those who enter the Dakor monastery may not come back out, and if they do, often they're fundamentally changed. Gaining access to investiture through Dakor either requires or causes a twisting
reshaping of the soul. The forms used to access the door are the twisted and reshaped bones of its users, often not dramatic enough to see under a robe, but their skin is stretched over growths and ridges in the shape of ancient fjordal characters. These can grant the user increased strength and durability, speed, magic resistance, changes in appearance, and if a human life is expended, can even allow for teleportation. Fortin's Potions. There's a dude named Fortin, and he makes potions. That's basically all we got. Fortin is from the country of Hrovel, in the southeast region of the Fjordal Empire, and somehow, using the magic system of that region, is able to make potions that produce spectacular effects, antidotes for incurable poisons, among other things. Whether he uses plants of specific shapes, uh, techniques for stirring, crafting, or storing his concoctions, or some other approach to invest his potions, we don't know. One interesting thing to note is that these potions appear not to lose their power the further they get from their associated region, or else Fortin is just really stinking good at figuring in that drop-off rate. Forgery is the headlining magic system in the Emperor's Soul. While not as visually striking as drawing glowing symbols in the air, the applications of forgery and the realmatics behind it are fascinating. Forgers can change the history of objects by carving instructions for a plausible alternative into a stamp and stamping it to the object. These stamps must be carved by a forger, who has to be of Maipanese descent, though anyone, including non-forgers, can do the stamping which leaves a slight indentation in the surface of the object. These stamps can be applied to almost anything, including, somehow, liquids. And their effects can range from the mundane to the fantastical, from fixing a broken chair to rewriting a person's entire life story. The ink used must be fresh, from a living source, and the higher the order of the creature used to produce it, the more effective it will be in getting the stamp to take. Plant-based inks are less effective than animal inks, with squid ink being among the best. This may be related to the life-giving nature of investiture. The more sentient a creature is, the more natural investiture contained within its soul. It's plausible that because of humanity's comparably large amount of natural investiture, human blood would be an incredibly effective soul stamp ink. Speaking of, blood sealing, the creepy cousin of forgery, originating from the swampy Zamar region of the Rose Empire. All Zamarians are almost albino in appearance, with pale, milky white skin and hair, as well as red eyes. This may be an effect of the door interacting with the people of that region, changing the entire race in a similar way to the Elantrians. Or, it doesn't have anything to do with investiture at all, and Brandon just made an entire country of albinos for kicks. Blood sealers use stamps, similar to forgers, but rather than changing the past of an object, they imposed restrictions on an individual's present. We've seen two applications of blood sealing. Warding, keeping a subject imprisoned using that person's blood as a stamp, and in the creation of skeletals, reanimated, pokey skeletons that can chase people and follow other simple commands. Find this person! Stab that guy! Do this laundry! These creations are often compared to the lifeless in Warbreaker, which will probably be my next video, but they differ in several important ways. Most of these are functional and deal with amounts and sources of investiture. They're on different planets, they pull from different sources, they do different things. However, when lifeless are awakened and given a command, they function fairly autonomously. Alternatively, a blood sealer's skeletal seem to share some sort of mental connection with their creator, or else somebody wouldn't be crying in a closet on day 99. Now, if you haven't finished Elantris, stop the video now! A main part of Elantris is the discovery of why Aeondor works, or doesn't work, the way that it does. Or doesn't. Which is exactly what we're going to talk about now. So if you don't want that spoiled, you'll have to read and find out. Okay, so we already mentioned how all of the magic systems on Cell pull power from the same source, the door and are accessed, depending on where you are, by certain shapes. In all the ones that we know about, these shapes correspond to the geography of the associated region. Aeon Aeon, the basic shape of the entire Elantrian alphabet, is based on the map of Aerolon. Shai tells us in Emperor's Soul that the map of my pawn is contained in every soul stamp. Presumably, the circular movements of Cheshan reflect certain mountain or river formations. The ancient feudal characters on the bones of Dakor monks likely mirror the coast of that nation, and the map of Zamar must must be shaped like an eye. No idea what Fortin's up to. In order to understand why all this is, we have to jump back in the history of the Cosmere. After Adenalsium was shattered, the 16 shards of Adenalsium spread throughout their galaxy, with Aeona, the Shard of Devotion, and Sky, the Shard of Dominion, settling down together on Cell. Race, the holder of the shard Odium, after being unable to find ambition, visited Cell and killed Aeona and Sky. <laughs> 
splintering their respective shards. In order to prevent anyone from taking up those shards, Odium stuffed them into the Cognitive Realm, where they became a whirling plasma vortex of death. So now there's a bunch of raw investiture stuck in the Cognitive Realm with no way to get out. We learn in Elantris that the door has certain frequencies and pulse lengths that only allow it to be channeled through specific shapes. We're not quite sure how this works, but I figure that because the Cognitive Realm actually has locations, like a negative impression of the physical realm, the door sort of takes the shape of the landscape wherever it is. Like a giant magnetic storm, this conforming to the topography would create charges of investiture raging in fixed shapes, certain harmonics that would coincide with physical regions, with those simplified shapes acting as keys to allow it to exit the Cognitive Realm. But because the landscape is different wherever you are on the planet, those keys to access the door would have to be different depending on the region. This is also why the Riode caused the magic of Elantris to stop working. It's not that the map was no longer accurate, but when the chasm was opened in the south of Aralon, the cognitive representation of the landscape was changed as well, which would have naturally altered the shape and therefore the investitural, investitural, investitial charge of the door in that region. The old key no longer matched the new harmonic or frequency of the investiture, so the door was no longer able to flow through. That's probably why Hoyd wanted the Moon Scepter of my pawn, which is based on the Chinese Rui Scepters, which Brandon has said sort of works like a Rosetta Stone between the different magic systems on cell. If you know the regional key that allows investiture access, hacking a non-native system in that region would be significantly easier. That does raise a question as to whether the placement of the different base symbols would be the same for different regions. Like, if you were able to figure out how to use Aeon Door in my pawn, would the modified Aeon for protection, Aeon Edo, still be two diagonally mirrored shapes? Or would changing the key effectively change the entire programming language? Also, would it be possible to make a super Aeon, one symbol for the entire planet of Cell rather than the smaller regional ones? I've tried to fit the map of Opal into the symbol for the planet, but haven't figured it out yet. This way? Uh, maybe this way? Stupid severe deficiencies! We are set to have an Elantra sequel eventually, before Era 3 of Mistborn, probably after Stormlight 5 is written, set ten years later, which should go more into the machinations of Fjordan and the workings of Dakor. In the meantime, you can keep exploring the Cosmere by checking out some of my other videos. My next one will be on the magic of Warbreaker and the importance of intent, so please subscribe to know as soon as it comes out. Should be in the next couple of weeks. I get the feeling that learning more about Cell and the Door will give us a lot more knowledge about how Investiture works throughout the Cosmere. So until we get more Elantris, we're all going to have to wait and find out. Or someone come up with a good question to ask Brandon at a signing.